Hi, welcome to my channel Mostly Knitting. I'm Tash and it's the 23rd of February 2023. I'm recording from Sydney, Australia and it's a bit of a grey afternoon here. Uh, not as hot as it has been for the last few weeks which is really nice, a nice change. So um, if you're new here, uh, this is a podcast mostly about my knitting. Um, if I do any crochet I'd mention it as well but I haven't uh, for a little bit and then maybe a little bit of sewing at the end if I've done any and a little bit of chatter at the end. So in this week's episode I've got one finished object which I'm wearing, uh, one new cast on, I've got three works in progress that I've made some good um, good progress on. I don't have any sewing um, any sewing this week but I do have some some ideas coming up and then just a little bit of chatter about my week and oh, my, my knitting plans what I'd like to make um, sort of coming up over the next month or two. All right, so I'll get started with um, my finished object. This is Ilha, and it is by Orlan, um, I can't pronounce the last name, it's S-U-C-C-H-E, I'll probably say it wrong if I guessed. Um, so the yarn that I used was the Woolen Rabbit Airy, and it's a single ply yarn, a single ply, four ply, single ply fingering weight yarn, and the colorway is Myrtle. Um, I weighed it uh, after I'd sort of finished and blocked it. It weighs 275 grams and I've got 75 grams left over. So it was less than two and a half skeins. I think the yardage was really good on the, um, on the airy. So I'll just stand back so you can see the whole thing. So I made it just above knee length, which works well for me. It's okay, it doesn't ride up too much when I sit down. Um, yeah, and it's blocked out really nicely. I'm really happy with how it, how it came out. Um, I'll just show you. This is the... Um, it's meant to be... Um, so it's like a seed stitch, but it's meant to be in the pattern four rows of twisted rib, and then you offset it um, so that the pearl is where you knit and the knit where you purl. Um, but I just... It was going to be too long, and um, I just didn't want that much of a brim. It was quite a quite a wide brim, maybe over two inches. So I ended up just doing, um, it ends up looking a bit like a two by two seed stitch, but instead of just regular knit stitches, I had twisted knit stitches, but just regular pearl stitches. So I did six rows on the, um, the sleeves, sleeve cuffs, because I really wanted to keep them short. I think I only did two rows of regular knitting and then six rows of the cuff. So really no sleeves beyond what naturally comes from the yoke. And then on the, on the bottom, you can't see it, but I did um, 10 rows. So five, five sets of two, two rows um, to get the, the ribbing. So yeah, I'm really happy with that. So I finished that a couple of days ago and today's its first, um, its first outing and I really like it and I'm definitely going to make another one, um, but I'll talk about that in my plans. Um, so my so that's my finished object. My work's in progress. I've made good progress on Ms. Urena, and I've split off for the sleeves and the body. So I'm just working down the body now, but I've only just done like an inch or so. I did find when I tried it on that it wasn't long enough in the arm side. I needed at least another four rows. Uh, I haven't actually tried it on yet, but I will, and I'll put it. I'll, I'll try it on, and I'll put a photo up here. Um, and I'll rip back if it's too if it's too tight. I'm really hoping it's not. Um, but I needed a few extra rows, just both for length in the arm side, and I needed it to be a little bit wider. Like I just felt like it was on 300 stitches, and with my gauge, that just wasn't going to be quite enough. So I did two raglan increases. Um, I just sort of, you know, I think I did 94 for the front, 94 for the back, and maybe 56 for the sleeves and then did, you know, increased eight stitches, did an even round, increased eight stitches, did another even round, and then split everything off. I had to be a little careful with my numbers because there is actually a pattern and I wanted to start that pattern. It's not much of a pattern, but it's like knit three stitches and then purl, knit three, purl, and then you offset it. So it's, um, yeah, so it's, I did have to make sure that I had multiples of four and be a bit careful when I split off the sleeves but just so that when I split off the sleeves, everything lined up and I wasn't sort of staggered. Um, but yeah, I'm happy with how that's going. I have 90 grams, after splitting off for the sleeves, I've got 90 grams of the main color left and I'll just have to work it as long as I can get it um, with the 90 grams left. I'm thinking, given like I've already done the yoke, I'm hoping that's enough. 
Anyway, I'll weigh my yarn as I go to make sure that I have enough just to at least do a cuff on each sleeve. Like I'll see how many, um, you know, I'll do like, let's say five rounds and weigh it before and after and then work out, okay, on, on how many body stitches I have, you know, how much given two sleeves and each sleeve has 64 stitches, that kind of thing to work out the math of just how much I'd need for the, for the cuffs with a little bit of extra wiggle room. Actually, I don't even need to do that. I was thinking, because I don't like cutting balls and everything, but I've got, I've got these skeins here. So maybe I'll just do that. Maybe I'll finish this. I think, yep, I've already decided. I will use these to finish the sleeves and then whatever I have left, that's the body. Because I don't think, it's not like I would use more for the sleeves. I'm going to at least need, let's say, five rows for the cuff. So anyway, that's Miss Urena. I really like it. And um, I'm hoping that when I try it on, it's going to be... Okay, I mean, I did like I tried it on with lots of um, lots of needles around, and it seemed to be okay. Um, but you just never really quite know until you've. I usually get to about two inches past splitting off, just so there's a bit of stability, and then I put it on a really long circular, and or two circulars. Like I'll have one for the front and one for the back, and then I'll try it on and just be a bit careful. As long as I've got really long circulars, I'll be okay. And I do have a lot of needles. So that should be fine. So that's Ms. Urena. Oh, um, that Ms. Urena is by Caitlin Hunter and I'm using Tosh Merino Light in the charcoal colorway. And this is Hedgehog Fiber Skinny Singles in the, I'm pretty sure it's Damask colorway. Uh, yep, okay, so and that it was three mils for the ribbing and 3.5 for the body. So that's um, Ms. Urena. My, um, I made lots of progress on my muscle bra hat by Sol de Teague. So I finished all of the light color, did the um, middle, which will be the brim bit in the middle color. And then I'm actually on the decreases. And I think I've got about maybe 90 or so stitches left. So that will be done. I've, I've woven in all of my ends. Um, I'm using a 3.25 millimeter, but I'm feeling like that's actually a bit dense. And I've just started a new one with similar yarn and I'm using a 3.5 millimeter needle because I just, I don't know, I think I'll be a bit happier with that. Uh, one thing that happened with this was I noticed about maybe about 15, 15 rows down that I dropped a stitch. And it was just too far to, to ladder down. Like there just isn't enough yarn to be able to pull that that far up. I would have had to rip back. It was at least 15 rows. And I thought, look, there's 134 stitches on the needles at that point. I was like, there's really, no one's going to miss one stitch in terms of it's not going to make it smaller enough to be a problem. And so all I did was secured it in on the wrong side. And I have done a tutorial video on that if anyone's interested. If you've ever either dropped a stitch and you just want to secure it, you just want to make sure it doesn't run down. You're not going to try and, you know, rip back or whatever. You just want to make sure that it doesn't go any further and that you can't really tell that it ever happened um, once the item's finished. So either you've already bound off or it's way too far to fix So um, without ripping back. So I've done a tutorial on that and I'll put it up. I've um, just got to um, put a couple of edits and I'll put it up later in the week. Uh, so that's um, the muscle bra. I, I think I'll finish that probably tonight because uh, I've got cards tonight and I usually just do a little bit of knitting on that. Um, so that's that muscle bra. Uh, my... When I say that muscle bra, there is another one. Um, but before that, I'll just quickly show these socks. You can see there's actually a little bit of progress. I've just started my first heel increase. And I've got about 10 grams left, maybe nine or 10 grams left out of 26 grams. So that, I guess that must've taken about 16 grams. That should be enough for the heel and just going up a little bit, I'm really hoping. Um, so yeah, so I, I would like to get that heel finished and then start on the second sock. I always feel a lot better when I'm on the second of anything because then the decisions have already been made. I've measured everything. I know I'm happy. I know I've got enough. Um, I don't have to then, you know, I don't have to keep trying it on, right? When I'm doing the second sleeve or the second sock, I already know what I'm doing. Uh, so that's the fingering weight socks with a gusset heel by Wendy Johnson, 2.25 millimeter needle um, socks here by Coop Knits in the colorway Ruby and Yes, I'm happy with that. Um, I just want to kind of want to get it done because I want to make those climb socks by Jane Richmond. So I, can't, I won't let myself start another sock until I finish these ones. And 
which brings me to my second muscle bra. I don't really like having two of the same pattern on the needles, but I know that my first one will be finished soon. So this is, uh, oh gosh, okay, I'm going to try to not have clanking, but it's tricky because it's on, I'm using two circulars because it's still quite small because it starts from a pinhole cast on and then you increase until you get enough stitches. So this one I said, this is, it's not metal and tosh, tosh merino light, but it's a similar yarn. It's skein yarn and it's their single ply. I do have a bit of a thing for single ply sock yarn. Um, and it's the colorway Airy. And it was what, if you recognize it, it's what I used for my birds of a feather. And I had just over half a skein left, I had 58 grams. So I thought I might do, which is what I was hoping, I was thinking about doing was a two, like just a two color muscle bra where you've got one on the inside, one on the outside, and you'll just see the other one when you fold up the brim. So you always have the two. So this is definitely one color. Obviously I've started with this one and I'm trying to decide between these two. So this one is Tosh Merino Light in Dopamine, the, this one here. And this one is Hedgehog Fibers Skinny Singles in the colorway Wish. I'm thinking this one. I've got about, I've got 58, oh no, I've only got about 48 grams of that, but I think that will be fine. because I don't think I'll use a full skein, especially with slightly larger needles. So yeah, I'm thinking those two. I'd be interested to hear what you, gosh, it's caught in my watch, what you think. Um, if you want to write in the comments below, the Wish with the Airy or the Dopamine with the Airy. That's two speckles or that's a speckle and a solid. I think I kind of like that, but you know, tell me what you think. So that's that one and um, I'll try and get the other one finished. Now, the thing that's really annoying me about this is I can't find my three millimeter, three, sorry, 3.5 millimeter, 40 centimeter needles. I have so many needles, it's ridiculous. Um, but I guess I must only have one 3.5 millimeter, 40 centimeter. Because I've just bought needles on D-Stash or when people have been having a sale. Actually, I brought it up here to show you. I'm just gonna grab, I'll show you really quickly. These are my, oh, these are my needles. So I made like a little, I can't remember, somebody showed me, I saw it on um, somebody's blog. And you do this, um, you know, you sort of mark, uh, a couple of them have dropped off, but you put sort of the size on the side and then you thread it through. And that has actually been really handy. It looks very messy. Um, excuse me, going off camera. It looks messy, but I find I put them back. That was my biggest problem with using needles was that I, they would just end up in a pile and then I wouldn't put them away properly and then I just have an enormous pile. And having said that, I just said I put my needles away. Clearly, I still do, it still takes me, I've got like four or five and then I put them all away. But I don't know, for the life of me, I can't think where I've put, where I've put my. So look, you don't have to have a 40 centimeter needle. I could magic loop or once I get big enough, the 60 centimeter needle that um, should be enough, even though that's 24 inches and the hat is probably only about 21, 22 inches. I have found that I can knit that uh, muscle bra hat on a 24 inch needle. So once I'll just have to stay on the two circulars at the moment. I, or I could magic loop of course, but I don't want to magic loop that. That's a lot. I mean, the whole point is I just want to go around and round and round. Even magic loops a bit annoying for me. So either I'll find those or I'll get it to the 60 centimeter and then I'll be able to go round and round for a bit. And then obviously I have to magic loop when I get to the, um, when it gets small enough, like the circumference gets small enough, I'll either magic loop or two circulars. Okay, so that is, there are all my works in progress. Um, that's, yes, the two hats, Miserina and a pair of socks. The next segment is faux from the vault. So I've got a two for one here. This is the sorrel yarn, sorrel pattern by Wool and Pine. And this is the first one that I made. And it is such a great pattern because it, uses like a gradient you can use any yarn underneath but what ties it all together is the mohair that you hold with it so i don't know if you can see but especially that top one is really quite it's got some sparkle to it that's 
some uh, leftovers of a circus tonic sparkle sock and then I used a three mums yarn underneath and then I used dopamine at the bottom that's this one here um, and then, yeah, on the edges of the sleeves as well and yeah and I just love 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 this yoke detailing with those stitches where you pull up and it's just so so pretty so I fell in love with that and I also loved the fact so um, I love the fact that you could use up all of this yarn that was like maybe 20 grams here or 30 grams there you just do a few rows of that and as long as it wasn't sort of crazy different it could work in with um, with the other colors so yeah I'm so happy with that one so I did that in around June 2020 and so the, I think the mohairs are Rowan Kid Silk Haze and I had um, some Rowan Kid Silk Haze in, this is a little bit crumpled, sorry, probably could do with a good block, it's sort of been squished in a, just squished in one of my Ikea cubbies. Um, and this was another Rowan Kid Silk Haze but in this sort of yellow green colour and I used like a whole range of different, I'll put links to the, my Ravelry project pages with the different yarns that I used. But you know, they were some pretty crazy sock yarns and I just couldn't figure out what I was gonna make with them. And or some leftovers, you know, 30, 40 grams. Probably better, for, you know, if you had sort of at least 30 grams. Anyway, I really like both of those. And I, I wear the blue one more just because of the coloring. I think even though I love this color, it's probably not the best one on me, but I just love it. So, um, yeah, so that's my faux from the vault. I don't think there's anything else I was going to mention from that. But yeah, if you have some like some yarns that you've bought that you're not really sure what, what you're going to do with them and you've got a few and they're kind of in the same sort of family um, or some leftovers, this is a really great pattern. And it was just so fun, fun, fun to knit. Like I just loved knitting this yoke. And I'm quite positive that it's knit um, like... I'm definitely not purling all of that, I'm sure, right? Because that's the presentation side, it's reverse stockinette. I know I knit all of that and then flipped it around. So it's definitely not a whole bunch of purling. Yeah, so that's my faux from the vault, which I love, both of those. So my plans, um, I will mention, I, will, I do want to make another Ilha dress like this one. And I already have picked out this yarn, um, which is Life in the Long Grass, Linen Merino in Chirp. I know that my gauge on this is smaller than this, so I might have to do a little mathing, maybe make a larger size, um, because I, I did my so faded sweater in, my second so faded sweater in this yarn, and I know my gauge is tighter, so I need to do a little bit of math to make sure I'm making the right size. And it's also, prob what's problematic is that my 3.5 mil needle, 40 centimeter, needle which is what I would start with has gone walkabout so I do want to find that if I haven't found it I'll have to order another one um, from my yarn shop but you know like I don't want them to sit just seems annoying it's about a half hour drive to my yarn store so it's not like it's around the corner um, so I could just get them to send it but it just seems like my the yarn that I ordered hasn't arrived yet so it's not like I could say oh, I'll throw it in with my yarn anyway that's by the by that's annoying but I do want to make another one of those my ebb dress, I haven't made it yet, but I blocked my swatch and I am happy with it. I'm still a little second guessing that light gray, but I do, I think it'll be, I think it'll be good. So I might have to start this before this um, because I don't have the needle for this. Maybe I'll just postpone that one and do my ebb dress first. But I just wanna have another, whenever I'm doing a repeat knit, I just wanna go and have another look at my notes, see if there's any, like I don't wanna make a mistake and go, oh, I already knew not to do that from the first time I made it. So I want to go back and have a little read. So it's got a, a couple of unusual cast ons, which I think might be because they want, they suggest that the dress can be reversible, but I don't really want it reversible. I actually really, I don't really like that side as much. I really like that side much better. So I don't think I'd bother trying to make it reversible and have all of my, you know, you've got to be really careful with that with all your weaving in of ends. And there's going to be quite a few ends with this. So yeah, I'm just, I don't think I'd bother with that. So if that's the case, I don't know why I would do all these different casts on that, you know, maybe aren't gonna make any difference if I'm not making it reversible. The only thing I will mention, which I did notice, was in my swatch, because I'm holding the yarn double, where is it? Can you see there that there's a slipped stitch? So even though reverse stockinette, the reverse side is the presentation side, you're gonna knit it on the knit side, and it's pretty easy sometimes to 
um, not when you're knitting with the yarn held double to not wrap both around, um, which may not be that obvious on this side, but on this side, you're really going to see it. So I just, I'm going to have to be a little bit more, pay a little bit more attention with my knitting when I'm knitting, holding yarn double and the reverse stockinette side is the presentation side because it will be obvious. And I just, that is something I would go back and fix. Like even if it was a lot of rows, that would really annoy me, especially if it was like right here, right? Like I'm not going to, I'm not going to have this bar that doesn't look right sitting right here. So I'll just be a little bit more when I'm knitting on this, not be knitting it on it late at night or when I'm chatting away with someone, I'd make sure I'm sort of at least able to check. Uh, not that I knit on a lot of garments when I'm with people because, you know, I'm sizing everything, mm. trying things on and stuff. So anyway, that's the ebb dress. And the other upcoming plans, I still will make the climb socks when I finish these socks. But the thing I'm excited about and the reason I showed you the sorrels was I think I want to make two more sorrels. Not just one, you know, because like, I don't, you know, when I make something, I want to, I, I find I do this, like I make something and then I'm like, ah, I want to make five of them and I get yarn for lots of them. But the good thing about this is I, I was noticing all of these sorts of leftovers that I had and they're in similar families. So this is the Rowan Kid Silk Haze in this sort of really quite pretty pinky color. And I have the leftovers from Dotted Rays. Only one of them I had, I had enough leftovers from. These are a couple of leftovers from my So Faded, these two. Um, this is, I don't know what this is, some top that I made. Uh, that's Tosh Mo Light and Hilo. I must have made a top in that. So there's that. And like, cause it's all gonna have this over the top of it. So that will kind of bring it all together. This is a bit random. I'm not sure if that will be okay, but probably this is something from my aunt. But like with that going over, it might be all right. Anyway, and and this, this was the yarn that I was going to use for the third color in my dotted rays. So I've got a full skein of that, which I think can be quite handy in this pattern to finish on, like, you know, because you'll have your sleeves and the body when you're, you know, you've got quite a lot on the body and the, yeah, so that might be the nice one to finish on. So anyway, so that's one sorrel. And then I just found another random little ball. I don't know what it is. I think it is for my aunt as well. Yeah, so I think that's enough, I hope. The only little bummer about this was that I didn't, with my first two, because I was using lots of random balls, I didn't really weigh properly at the start and the finish how much fingering weight yarn I used. I can probably work it out, because obviously I used one mohair the whole way. So if I just looked at how much mohair I used, that would tell me roughly the meterage of fingering weight and I can do the math and see is that enough. Um, but even if it's not, I'll be able to find something probably that will work in with it. So that's the pink one and the other one is the purple one. So this is some Hedgehog Fibers Kid Silk Lace. That's also from Skein Sisters that I bought ages ago to go with, um, to go with some four ply yarn. But when I put them together, the yarn, the other yarn was sort of gray with purple over uh, overtones, undertones, I don't know. It was gray with like a purple leaning gray. But when I put it together, I just looked really dull. It was like, it was, what should happen is that like it, it sings and makes each one better. But it was like, this looked worse and that one looked worse. So I was like, no, I'm not doing that. So, but then of course I have three skeins of this. I was like, what am I doing with that now? So anyway, so I started finding a few purples that I thought, I don't use a lot of purple, so this is a bit trickier for me. So I'm sort of looking at kind of grayish, you know, some of them are quite dark, so I'd probably have to use them to finish off. So anyway, that's kind of the few different colors that I'm looking at. Oh, these two, I've got a lot of this one. This is something called maybe concrete or something. But you know, and you know what's so nice about this pattern though, is anything with those speckles, it really like, you just see these little pops coming sort of, through it so it's but it like it just softens it a little bit anyway so that's got quite a lot of speckles in it so I thought that those I, don't, I still don't know if I've got enough of this I'm a little bit unsure of and that's a darker purple yeah okay so that's a little bit crazy probably cutting off my hands are all over everything but I will weigh it all and try to work out by weight 
if I'll have enough. And the other thing I don't mind about this is, you know, I think I've said in the past, like if I'm using a single ply yarn in a sweater, I want it all to be single ply yarn, not some random plied yarn. Um, whereas with this, because it's gonna have the mohair covering it, it really doesn't matter. I don't care if some's, some's plied, some's not plied, it's totally fine. So like here's a plied yarn, um, that will be fine, you know? And that's obviously very purple. Um, but I, I will be a little bit thoughtful about how I how I sort of gradiate them. Anyway, so that's two sweaters that I think I'd like to make. Sorry, that's my washing machine. Okay, so that's quite a lot of plans there. I've got another dress, two dresses, the Ebb dress, the Ilha dress, two sorrels, a pair of socks. So yeah, I've got a lot. That will take me for, that's got a bit there. Uh, yeah, so, um, and the only other, I don't actually have any acquisitions this week, except I went to my library today. I had to put this on hold. I've been wanting to make more salads, and so I got this book from my library called Community, and it's salad recipes from the Arthur Street Kitchen. Someone in my Bible study recommended it, so um, I just got that out today, so I haven't even had a look at it, so that will be nice to have a look at. Um, I love salads that actually are like a meal. So you've got your protein, your carbs, and your fresh fruit and veg, and I don't like them too sweet, like I don't want fruit in my savoury salads, but you know, like goat's cheese and or um, noodles and various things that just make it a meal. So yeah, so I'm looking forward to trying a few recipes from that, hopefully that will be good. Um, so the last little bit is just some sewing plans that I have and a chatter about my week. So um, if you're leaving me now, thanks so much for watching. If you could like and subscribe, that would be lovely. And I'll see you next week. Uh, so if you're staying, uh, sewing, I don't have any sewing this week, but I did notice that Megan Nielsen um, on Instagram that she's been doing like a sew along for the Brumby skirt. And I have that pattern and I've been wanting to make it. I love it's got, I'll put a picture up here. It's got these huge deep pockets. I'm almost positive I've got fabric for it. I have the pattern. I even have it printed out from copy shops. So all I have to do is cut it out. So, and, and what I like about this sew along is that there's, I don't think there's any videos, but there's lots of really detailed photos and particularly there's an exposed zip in the back. So um, I think I will, yeah, do that. Probably not this week, maybe next week, because I have, um, I'm going away this weekend. Um, so, and about my week, it's been a pretty, uh, like a quiet week compared to the previous week with concerts and various things. So I just did my usual um, running and um, cards with visiting my dad, um, cards on Thursday night, which we will again tonight. I went out on Friday night for sushi on a date night with my husband, which was really nice. Um, yeah, not, not a lot happening. So, oh, and it was my second, my son's second last baseball game of the season. He's playing this Saturday, but his last game, but I, they didn't make the finals, um, but I'll be away. So I'll miss that one, but it's all right. I think he's gonna play winter baseball anyway. So, which is coming up. And actually he's gonna play winter baseball with my husband. So he's, my son's 15, 15 and a half. And I think he's now old enough to be able to play with his dad, which will be really sweet. They're both catchers though, so that will be a bit tricky. They'll have to share that position. Um, but yeah, I think that would be really nice watching both of them. My daughter, my daughter Alex used to play as well. But then, you know, when she was about 14, 14, 14 15 year old boys and Alex is smaller than me. So it just, it got a little bit much for her, but she used to play as well. So, and I used to score and all of that I might start scoring again but then uh, anyway when you're scoring you're kind of committed you're locked in and if you need to do a wee and you're there for two hours it's really hard um yeah sometimes it's just nice to be able to watch and knit so um yeah I won't be seeing my son's last game this weekend but that's all right there's always more baseball um other things oh so we watched a bit more shows so I thought I might just mention some shows that I watch we finished watching um Peaky Blinders which was amazing Succession um, we watched the last season uh, of Dead to Me, which was really good. Started off a bit iffy, but got good. Um, and that was really lovely. It was really sad seeing Christina Applegate looking so unwell. So I heard that she was diagnosed with MS and she doesn't look well. So yeah, it's like, she's probably about my age. Um, and it is hard, like as you get older, you start to get more things going wrong. Um, but it was a really good show. She's uh, such a great actress. Uh, what else? Oh, so oh, and we watched the first season of White Lotus, 
started watching um i haven't watched the start of the second season yet but we probably will started watching this show called poker face with um natasha leon i really like her she's got such a great voice and just a really cool act actress uh and the other one was we just watched the first episode of the first season of the americans a friend recommended that to me and i really liked that so and i think there's like six seasons i think that's so awesome when you find a show that you like and it's like oh wow there's all these seasons and you don't have to wait for it so anyway so that might be our new um we don't really binge them but it's sort of like okay if we're going to watch something we'll watch that one until we finished it and then start a new one so there's some shows that i've been watching there's still a lot of running around with the kids because there's still i still have two children without a license um, but hopefully our middle child alex will have hers in a few months then we get to the problem of having two kids who have licenses with only one car so i'm hoping that my elder daughter mia she wants to buy a car and for a while they're like new cars were really hard to come by um, because of everything with china and used cars were really expensive i think that settled down a little bit but she wants to buy a hybrid and i think what she wants there's like a six month wait and i think there's going to be quite some time like it's not going to be six months before alex gets her license so anyway it's always dramas with children um but anyway they'll have to figure it out there's one car to to lend more to sort out between the two of them but i'm sure i'll get dragged into it uh so on oh, the other thing that's coming up for me is that tomorrow i'm going away just for the weekend with a really good friend of mine um, we've been friends since we were well i'll date myself here since we were about 19 and so that's over 30 years now and um, she's a great friend and she's working an event up in noosa and so she's already got a hotel room and she's going to stay a couple more days and i'm going up tomorrow so we'll have a couple of nights there noosa's got a beautiful beach and um yeah like hopefully the weather will be all right it's meant to be okay like 26 27 which is about 80 ish so yeah i'm just looking forward to a couple of nights of hanging out with a really good girlfriend and you know going out for dinner and going to the beach and going to the pool and everything so yeah that'll be nice so i'll take my um that's of course i had to think what am i taking with me um because i'll i'll knit while we, you know chat and whatever um i'll take my muscle bra hat i'll take socks and the miserina if it's just the body and every, all that you know all the yolks done there's no nothing to do on the waist it's very basic pattern um, on the body so i'll take that one with me as well because there'll be a bit of plain knitting too it's about an hour and a half plain ride um yeah i think that's it uh thanks for if you're still with me now thanks so much for uh for watching and that um on the end card that's my sorrel on the end card so yeah, I'm really excited about making me one of those. So yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.